Hello, people. Just going to give it a second for you fine people to get your arse into gear and log on. And uh, then we're going to take a look at our Spectrum Next Arcade Special. Hi guys, thanks for jumping on, thank you. Hi Lampros, hi Simon. A uh, couple of other names are just cropping up on my feed here guys, so bear with me. Just going to give it a minute for a few more people to log on before I start talking because there's a lot to cover this evening. Uh, first of all, I will say my apologies for being late. Um, I've, got, you know, I've got very few major duties at the moment and responsibilities, but one of them is we have to see to some relatives and stuff on a Wednesday evening, so I've been doing that. Uh, there's we've also had quite a few teething troubles in getting this evening's little uh, video set up because uh, I've done streams the last two nights running and tonight's stream I've needed to prep a lot and I literally only decided at midnight last night that I was going to do one today pretty much um, and uh, I've not had time to, to set it all up so we've had a few teething problems a few things I needed to uh, check on about a few hardware issues so I'll go into them in just a minute but yeah there's a few of you jumping on now nice to see you here hey Jim how's it going um, anybody else who's in the room say hi um, right okay so there's a few of you jumping on now so I might as well kick off and say what's going on um, uh, basically um, hi guys and welcome to another Yam Yam Retro Gaming live stream uh, this evening we've got something quite special for you. Uh, this is the uh, Spectrum Next Arcade Special, I like to call it. How's it going, Pete? I'll be giving you a mention very shortly, mate. Um, so, uh, what's been going on recently? Well, I've been I've been off work. I've been doing a few different things. I've been working on some few different projects, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't been visiting the Next much recently. Uh, and I've only just started doing my streams again because I've been a bit off. So uh, the last couple of days I've done some major streams. But there's, there is a lot going on behind the scenes with the Spectrum Next. Now obviously a lot of you know I have a lot to do with uh, Jim and Mike of Rusty Pixels. Uh, they're working on me with my own game Revival Survival. And uh, as you've seen no doubt from the post save for the last couple of days, uh, last couple of weeks, they've been working on a few little secret things behind closed doors. And um, I finally got my first glance at these things yesterday. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I do get a little bit of insider information, but I don't get to see uh, much until it's ready to show to everybody else. And they trust me to put it out to you guys. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm not going to put my ugly mush on camera. Uh, I look like crap right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the real goods when it comes to this. So, uh, what you're looking at uh, directly in front of my face right now is um, on the left we have my laptop set up running main and uh, a favourite game of a lot of people, Robotron. And on the right here, as <laughs> you just, just come on just in time, is uh, Rob Verhagen Guest's version called Spectron. And um, the, the theme of this video this evening is that basically... Uh, one of the things that the guys want to prove, one of the things that the Next team has always wanted to stress, is that the Spectrum Next itself is a, you know, a system that's very capable, a lot more capable than the old Spectrum was. It's still an 8-bit, but you know, one thing the Spectrum really suffered with back in the day was arcade ports. Now, it, it wasn't possible for a Spectrum to really faithfully put over a, you know, an arcade conversion that even looked anywhere near what the arcades are. And um, unfortunately, it meant that, you know, the, the, the arcade experience at home was quite often pathetic. And thankfully now, um, yeah, th uh, thankfully now, um, the Spectrum Next is now capable of doing that. Now, when the guys took on my project of Revival Survival, um, the whole point was to basically convert a game that's been done in a classic style, but actually hasn't, hasn't got the limits that an old... 8 or 16 bit arcade machine you know would have done back in the day because uh, obviously I've used like full palettes you know I've used mp3 audio uh, there's no sprite limits or anything like that 
and thankfully my game is port in very well uh, over onto the next even though you do have to limit certain things like that and since we began development certain extra features have been put back in which allows the uh, which allows us to actually do a little bit more with the games I think it's because of the feature requests that are being put in by the developers but anyway uh, it's got the guys thinking and obviously they're all working on little things behind the scenes of the the big games they're doing now obviously Rusty Pixels They've been working on uh, Baggers in Space, which you've seen a lot of. And I'm going to give a little whisper here. Um, I did actually get a little sneak preview of the nearly finished version yesterday. Uh, Mike actually let that one slip to me. Sorry, Mike. I did, I did see it amongst your files. <laughs> so I did have a quick blast, but I'm not going to give anything away for everyone. Suffice to say, um, I know Baggers in Space is the kind of killer app you're all kind of waiting for for it. And I, I showed you a very early version of that and played through quite well. The later levels get fiendishly tough and there's some brilliant things to see. So uh, look forward to that one. But besides that, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on behind closed doors. Uh, now, a lot of people who've already got their next will have seen in the recent distributions um, a couple of other things appearing. One of them, of course, is this, uh, Spectron 2084. Now, this has been done by Rob Verhagen Guest. Uh, I hope I'm doing his name justice, by the way. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I just saw that, Mike. It was on purpose. Okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he's he's done this, this demo right now of uh, basically a carbon... I mean, it, it's a, it's a bang-on port of the arcade original Robotron. I mean, we, I mean, we're looking at them right now. You can see, besides the title where it says Robotron and Spectron, the graphical effects that are going on, the colours involved, the screen layout... The general pace of the game, uh, they've gone as far as mimicking the font, um, the title characters, all the side characters coming on now. It is absolutely bang on carbon copy. You know what I mean? It's it's not, I mean, in many ways, it's actually better. If you look at the way the Williams logo animates around the edge of the Robotron screen, and then in a second, if you wait for the Spectron screen to pan over, Look how smooth the little S's move around the edge of that. That is a million times smoother. So now I've got to be honest, my intention was to set up uh, just over here. I have one of my main PCs. I thought I'd set it up ready with all my custom software, with the optimal display and everything like that. Uh, it's the wrong PC and I only found out right before I started this video. So I had to quickly do a bit of MAME searching, a bit of MAME downloading and um, I managed to quickly grab the original ROM, so I don't know if it's uh, experiencing any kind of um, frame skip or anything right now, but it's an older game, I think it's running at full speed, so this, this is for direct comparison. Uh, one thing I will say, however, um, the Spectron 2084 demo right now, and that's all it is, a running demo, you can't actually play this just yet. I believe he's got plans to make it playable, uh, obviously, it can't be sold. It's not a licensed thing, and it is like a carbon copy. But it's it's very it's a very good tech demo, and it'd be nice to see it playable. Um, and uh, this is only running fifty hertz, whereas as, as, yeah, so obviously this is running at full speed over here. So yeah, definitely, definitely, Mike. Sorry, guys, I'm 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 kind of talking away at you here. I know there's a lot of you in the room. I'm just going to go back down your comments and see if there's anything that I've missed. Um, yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, hi, Robin. G glad to see you on, mate. Thanks, thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if there is any kind of uh, quality dropout on the Wi-Fi, guys. I've tried doing it with my 4G yesterday, and I had a, a major quality drop, and I've tried doing it with my Wi-Fi again. I think there's actually something wrong with my router right now, because I'm filming this with my phone, and uh, right now I'm having quite bad Wi-Fi dropouts. So if the quality drops at any time, that's the only reason why. I've done, you know, high resolution streams on this phone before. I need to get in touch with Virgin and see if they can sort it out. So if the quality drops, I do apologise. But as long as you can hear me and see roughly what's going on, I'll keep the focus on the screens long enough that you can see what's going on anyway. Um, hi, Simon. Good to see you on, mate. Uh, David, good to see you on there. Yeah, sorry about the screen quality. Uh, Mike Cadwell, like, nice one, nice one, geezer. I don't care, though, all the usual suspects are in. Right, so... Um, one thing I am going to mention, um, like I say, I've had a few teething troubles in getting all these up and running. However, one thing I haven't had major problems with 
uh, is actually the exterior of my next. And I'm just going to show everybody this right now. Uh, I promised I would, and I'm, I'm going to show it. Um, <clears throat> up until this point, uh, my Spectrum Next was actually a 2A board, which was running in a basically a cut-up um, old rubber key Spectrum case. It was done by the guy who got it off, and it worked sufficiently. However, I had problems with uh, bad keyboard membrane, bad keyboard, and in the end, like the case is starting to crumble a bit, and the um, the face plate and everything's gone nasty. So. I've been speaking to uh, Pete, that's the guy here over at, and I'm just going to give him a little plug here. This is the guy over at ZX Renew. Now these guys here can pimp your classic Spectrum, your ZX, I think ZX Uno is it, one of the other reimagined Spectrums, uh, and also your Next with all kinds of funky cases, face plates, new keyboards, extra peripherals and things like that. Uh, and he's fur he's furnished me with some pretty cool stuff here. Uh, what I've actually got here is a textured uh, grey uh, plastic base on this. Uh, and the upper section is a smoked transparent shell, which looks pretty cool. Because you can see the LEDs through it and you can see a little bit of the operations going on inside there. Uh, the, the case has all been laser cut to fit everything completely correctly for the... Spectrum next and what's quite nice is you even get these little like chromed plastic buttons that fit on the inserts here So now I can reset my machine without needing to give myself some kind of injury on my on my little pinky So uh, I'm, I'm really pleased about that. Uh, it also came with a tidy little adapter the spectrum next uh, like the modified 48 cases don't fit your average HDMI cable too well because HDMI cables are quite chunky at the end. He also furnished me with this rather cool little adapter and as you can see it's chunky at that end to fit the standard HDMI uh, but it's got a smaller plug section there that allows it to fit snugly in the back of the next. If you go back to any of my past videos you will actually see a couple of times where I've accidentally knocked the HDMI cable out the back because it wasn't fitting snug so that has helped me immensely. Oh, and I'm going to mention it again because you're all going to need to get this when you get your next, next uh, an inline power switch. You're going to need this because the, the next won't have a physical power switch. Uh, and I think that's essential today. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thanks again to Pete over at ZX Renew. If you want to pimp yours, if you've got a board now doing nothing, waiting to be fully cased up, give these guys a shout, give Pete a shout. And he should be able to hook you up with some pretty cool stuff. Even if it's just for your classic Spectrums, give them a shout. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the reason I've had a few technical problems. Um, obviously, at the moment, the Spectrum Next are a little bit experimental. Uh, the firmware is changing pretty much daily. Uh, you've got the firmware itself. You've got the Next OS version. And along the lines, I'm trying to keep up, but I'm not always abreast of it. And I've got a, a little bit of a kind of firmware mismatch thing going on at the moment. So um, we've had a few problems getting the last couple of um, games running that we wanted to show. Um, and I wanted to be able to show them at 60 hertz. I'm not going to be able to because for some reason it's not playing nice with this TV. Which I, I had to struggle to find the right TV to use, use with my Nexts. Because some of my some of my earlier next videos, uh, I really struggled to get a decent display. Every time I switched between 50 and 60 hertz, it did weird things. So I'm only going to be displaying these things in 50 hertz for this video. But uh, some of the games that are being developed, um, like say the ones from Rusty Pixels, are designed to be displayed at 60 hertz, and uh, they'll run at a nice pace, and you'll get you know full frames per second and everything. So really cool. So anyway, uh, as a direct comparison, I mean, you can see demo-wise, it's it's pretty much bang on. Unfortunately, there's no uh, music to speak of from the from the next version. There's nothing you can do with the demo, but visually it looks very appealing. And hopefully, you know, pretty soon, uh, we'll be able to see the next doing exactly what the uh, PC is doing over here. So uh, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to play some perfect Robotron on the next. Here's hoping anyway. I mean, I think it looks fantastic. I think the work done on it is, is really, really good. And I'm really impressed to see that the next can do. I mean, I know my arcade conversion, you know, is, is a lot technically speaking, 
but this is a proper classic game, you know, this is what people want to see. They want to see their originals ported over in perfection. And I would say in many ways, Spectron actually looks and works better than Robotron ever did even in the arcades. So the only thing is to know is if he gets this working, I may have to build me a, a twin uh, eight-way joystick just for this game because I absolutely love it. And hopefully soon I'll be picking up an arcade original. So uh, the original 48K Spectrum version is pretty awesome. Never played it, Robin, never played it. I did have them all copied to the memory card on here, so I could have put it on for com direct comparison with that, but I've had to take it off because I've been chopping and changing the content on my SD card but I think it's enough for people there to be able to see that at least now this side by side with the proper arcade original, this is what the next is really capable of. And this is what people want to see. So um, moving forward, uh, Robin's not the only person to do it. And as a couple of people may have seen, uh, our very own Mike has been hard at work and he's actually done a similar job but to uh, a more completed extent, he's actually taken Scramble, which is another proper Golden Age classic, and he's modified Scramble and ported the, uh, the full arcade version um, to the next. I'm just going to load up the arcade version first. And we're going to take a look at that, because obviously this is playable. Let's dip the screen slightly so you're not looking at the, the, uh, the lights. I'm just going to show you Scramble on the on the arcade. Obviously, there's your title screen. Um, there's your high score screen. So you can recognise the aspect ratio, the background twinkling effects, the enemies, the colour scheme and everything. Pop in a few credits and we'll attempt to play it. very badly I am kind of playing it like left-handed if you know what I mean so I hate playing the keyboard at the best of times and, and my hand doesn't work too well so but visually it's there you can hear the sound effects and everything just to refresh your mind if you haven't played scramble on the arcade for many years you can see the changing colors of the backgrounds as you play through I think as I get over the next crest there you go it changes again Obviously this is an eight way affair and two buttons. And obviously that was something the original uh, Spectrum never did well back in the day. You know, it was only single button affairs, so having to modify the controls. Thankfully we've got new options now with the next. And you can see the pace and everything that's running at. Right, okay, I'm gonna let that die. And then now we're going to jump over to the next. And we're going to take a look at what Mike Ware has been up to. And we're going to jump in. Oh, let's turn it off. Start it back up, sorry, my bad. <coughs> Never played the Spectrum version of Railwatron. Uh, it never occurred to me to actually put that on the card for this. Be probably because I'd never played it, didn't even register in my head that it was uh, available. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Right, so. Browse. Go to games. To next. And let's jump in on Scramble next. So we've got a pretty cool title screen there based on the marquee and side artwork. Got the similar uh, fade over screen that you get on the, on the arcade boot sequence. You can see the twinkling light effect of the stars on the background and we've got the same enemies, same fuel pumps, the same typical, uh, I always call it the Namco font. I know other people actually call it the Konami font. Uh, I always call it the Namco font. It's that it's that typical old school arcade um, eight by I think eight by eight pixel uh, text. And um, oh, the game starts automatically. Or is that the demo mode? 
but uh, yeah, so this is the Spectrum Next version. And I'm just going to pan back out now so you can actually see these side by side. And like I say, do bear in mind that uh, right now, uh, this is runny, running on the 50 hertz mode, purely because I can't get to display a stable 60 hertz image on this TV right now. But I, I did see uh, Mike's videos of it. He's put a couple of videos up and he's got running at full 60 hertz and it looks bang on. Obviously, there's a little bit of stretching going on because it's running in the 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 next kind of native display on a widescreen TV, whereas MAME will try and put it in the proper aspect ratio. But this is about as close as you're going to be able to see it at the short notice I've tried to do this. I'll just reset this ROM. So you can see the attract sequence. <clears throat> and I don't know if they'll quite sync up, if you know what I mean. But you should be able to at least look at one and then look at the other and see what the difference, if any, there is. So obviously the uh, credit screen's a little bit different. <laughs> But when it gets into the game, hopefully we can get them to get into the game at the same time. There we go. And you can see side by side. You know, they are very, very close indeed. Um, let me just see if I can... Let me see if I can switch this into a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. And then at least it should be in the correct aspect ratio to directly compare. So let's just try this. And that's a, that's a more accurate comparison. Still in 50 hertz, unfortunately, not in 60, but that's a bit closer to the proper aspect ratio now. And like I say, it, it's difficult to appreciate just how close these are. Uh, what I might do in a minute, um, well, I'll show you some gameplay on this one, uh, and then I'll kill myself, and then what I'll do is I will try and start a game at identical times, because the differences between both of these is that <clears throat> this version of Scramble, unlike the, the Spectron demo, uh, this is fully playable and from what Mike tells me, it's now actually fully complete. And again, the nice guys there have done this as a bit of tech demo um, and uh, they can't sell it obviously because it is like an original property and everything. And it is a carbon copy, I mean look how identical those are. It's difficult to appreciate on camera. Uh, it might look like there's a colour difference, but I think that's just the way that the um, that's the way the camera's picking it up. I can tell you that the colour scheme uh, it, it's a little bit richer on the spectrum, but I think that's because of the graphical options I've got on main by default. But the actual colour scheme and everything is pretty much bang on. Uh, the ships and everything, the missiles and everything are the same colour. The ships are the same colour. Uh, the uh, the background twinkling lights are a lot brighter actually on the next, but the colour of the, uh, the the mountains and the, the scenery and everything is all identical to what you see on the arcade version of Scramble. Like I say, it's not picking up too well on here. It looks like a much brighter blue on the next, but it's actually identical. Um, so the blue on there right now is actually identical to this one. You just can't see it on the camera, unfortunately. Can't really do nothing about that. That's just the way that screens pick up. But the actual blue here face to face is identical. So let's just give this a call. Turn to this. We'll give this a bit of a whirl. And I apologise for any uh, camera glare. I'll try and dip it down a touch. There we go. And then we will attempt to... We can play this. Now, of course, the beauty of the beauty of the Spectrum Next is you're not limited to single button affairs, and I hate playing on a damn keyboard. I'll be honest, uh, and I'm still not very good. However, we do have the advantage of being able to use a Mega Drive joypad. We've got two button controls. So we've got independent buttons for both uh, firing and for your missiles. So let's kick this off. And I do have auto fire on here, which helps a lot. 
the sound effects are very similar. I haven't turned up too loud. I'll try and turn up a touch in a minute. Got to be honest with the auto fire, it makes things a lot easier. But this is playing beautifully with a joypad. The speed is identical. The scrolling is super, super smooth, just like the arcade original was. And it, it seems like such a, a menial thing now, but, you know, to get a decent arcade port on anything back in the day, you still had problem with scrolling landscapes and things like that. So to see it done so effortlessly on the next is really reassuring. It opens up the possibilities a lot for other ports and other games being done. So oh, I was about to run out of fuel anyway. See if we can go a little bit further on this. Still got the same UFO enemies that you've got on the arcade version. Exactly the same level structure. Same fuel tank placements. And I'm navigating this quite well. I mean, I, I suck at this game, but I'm doing all right here. If I can make it to the third area, I'll be happy. Oh, there we go. Oh, the comets. Hate this bit. Ah, oh. Come on, I've got one life. Let's see if we can get past this bit. Oh, that's awesome, man. Difficult, I'll be honest. The enemies are so much faster than you, but... That's the, just the nature of this game, innit? Oh, can't destroy them either. But it's the little subtleties that show you how arcade perfect these ports are. I mean, you've got the animated lights or windows on the ship. You know, the flames coming off the back of the rocket. Uh, the little turning animations of the missiles as they drop. So, now I've had one game, I'll, um, I'll pan back out again. And what I will try and do is start a game at exactly the same time. Yes, Rob, it's, it's a, I'm just having a quick look at your uh, questions here, guys. Yeah, this, this is, uh, it's a Mega Drive pad. Uh, it was one of the uh, third-party pads back in the day, but one of the few third-party pads that's actually better than an original pad. It's got a top-end D-pad. Um, it's got the turbo buttons across the top, which really helps on, you know, space shooters and things like that. I really love this Competition Pro pad. And I'm glad I've kind of had it since like back in the day. So really clean. I've tied up all the contacts and everything. Uh, and this is like the, gonna. I think this is gonna start to become the de facto standard. I think for a lot of games, especially when, as games move into uh, the region of more arcade style games and arcade ports, like the type of games I hope to to help get out there. Because you know the jammer standard back in the day was was three buttons. You know. The classics only used one, but, you know, right up until the mid-90s, the standard was a three-button affair, and the Mega Drive pad is perfect for that. Um, I did inquire, and I did try to consult with a couple of people over what the possibilities would be to make the control protocol so you could actually map controllers to keys on a keyboard because that would open the possibility for so many multi-button games on any joypad you want to use but uh, it kind of fell on deaf ears because I'm not one of the boys. But uh, I, I said it would be a good way forward because it would allow easier construction of custom joysticks and things like that. Now, for Revival Survival, that's actually something that I plan to do. I, make, I plan to make a custom keyboard, uh, sorry, a custom uh, joystick control panel um, that kind of mimics the um, the keyboard inputs that... I use for the arcade version that's put through an encoder uh, and you'll, I'm going to make a proper ambidextrous control panel with two buttons either side of a single uh, four-way joystick so um, yeah so using the Mega Drive pad is probably the best compromise I would say for playing the older games and the new games it's hard to play some old games using this if you've ever tried to play a platforming game where up is jump you'll realize it's hell on your thumb with it with a d-pad and that's why Obviously, buttons were a better choice once we got to this point. Uh, obviously, upper's jump worked okay when it was a joystick, where the fire button was either mounted on the stick itself or mounted conveniently on the base. Obviously, that's not going to be the case for you know games that are 
more arcade arrive now and you're going to need more buttons available whatever you do and like i said i think mega drive pad and the good thing is you can buy brand new mega drive like reproduced pads and things like that so it's not going to be difficult to get truck controls for this system i did have a chat chat with that one guy who was making certain peripherals and making the uh ned style joy pads i actually spoke to him about the possibility of getting some for trial so i could see about hacking them and making them into custom controllers uh, and seeing how well they worked um, with a variety of games but unfortunately communication kind of broke off there so maybe maybe another time i can investigate that but right now mega drive pads are the shit uh okay games use both hands not one hand and a thumb yeah, yeah, uh, I, I guess so, yeah. Um, no subtle parallax on the stars. Uh, yeah, but if you look, Jeremy, um, there's no parallax on the original. I think what Mike was obviously going for was an accurate port. Now, the, obviously, the star field position is a lot different, but this is the original scramble here. And if you notice when the screen moves, there's no moving as of the stars and he's obviously done exactly the same with the the next port here the star field is fixed but the foreground moves that's just like the arcade version i don't think it'd be too hard to do that now obviously the the next is more than capable of doing multi uh, multi-layer scrolling uh parallax scrolling I, I suppose it won't be long before somebody creates some kind of shadow of the beast esque multi-layered parallax kind of effect in a game and it'd be nice to see obviously as we were tech demo but i suppose for the purposes of what uh mike was trying to do with this it's it's actually perfect because it, it follows exactly like the arcade does uh, like i say the pics the uh, star field appears a little bit brighter on the next the resolution of the screen is obviously uh, very different to the arcade version but the, the, you know, the screen proportions, the layout and everything uh, is identical and it looks and it plays absolutely brilliant. And it's reassuring, you know. I mean, if you think back to the golden age of arcades, there's a lot of games of that time that kind of use these kind of very simple, small sprites. You know, they use the similar sound effects. Uh, they use similar layouts and resolutions. I know a lot has to go into the coding, but I suppose as far as... I was talking to, to Mike about this last night as it happens. As far as creating a visually and audibly identical port goes, um, the it's not going to be incredibly difficult to reproduce a few screens of any arcade game and prove and show that the next can do them perfectly. I mean, it might take some serious work to create any kind of proper, I don't know, a next arcade emulator, but it's reassuring to see that some of the, you know, it, 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 it seems like the ports haven't taken massive amounts of work to create like the arcade, but I do applaud, you know, these guys have done it off their own back. You know, Robin's done the, you know, a, a demo so far with some pretty cool flashy effects. Um, you know, Mike and Jim here have done, obviously, created a full game here as, as a port. And it's reassuring to see because I suppose if anybody else wanted to do similar and put their favourite Golden Age arcade game onto here for themselves and others to play, it wouldn't take much to do. And it'd be pretty cool to have... I know you can do emulation with a PC, but how cool would it be to have your trusty spiritual successor Sinclair down there playing both your 48k games, your 1 to 8k games, your ZX81 games, your brand new next games, and also your proper classic arcade games, you know, all in one place. I think that would really, that's the kind of thing that has really ignited the imagination amongst people who've been following the next project. And, um, you know, I applaud the guys who've done that. And I, I do hope, you know, silently, that especially the home coders or the people who are just going to be getting into attempting to code with the next. I hope that, that you know, as you would expect with kind of gaming creation 101, that these guys start to create, you know, Pac-Man clones, Space Invader clones, and obviously get them 
as arcade perfect as is possible, you know. I think that'd be really cool to see, and it it really would be a throwback to the days of the arcade coders, you know. So the the bedroom coders, you know what I mean? They did it, but they obviously had to do a lot more cramming. You know, there's potential here for people to learn a new spectrum, but be able to create games that the guys 30, 40 years ago could only have dreamed of being able to create something of this calibre. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think it's really reassuring. I think it's very inspiring as well. So, yeah, so that's Scramble anyway. And um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and fire up the simultaneous game on these just so you can compare them side by side and see exactly how they play okay uh one's gonna die before the other but we can at least see uh if we can get them to kind of sync up and i'll attempt to play the uh the next version so here we go Obviously, like I say, the next version is going to appear a little bit slower because it's running uh, at 50 hertz. I can't avoid that for the sake of this video, guys. I'm very sorry about that. But I have seen it running at 60 hertz, and it is arcade perfect. You know, there's, there's, there's only a slight uh, palette difference between the main colours. There's only a slight difference in the, uh, in the sound effects, you know, in the music. The way it plays, though, is identical. The pace of the ships, the pace of the enemies. Uh, but obviously, I've got the luxury of awesome control here with this tidy little pad playing the next version. I'll just quickly fire up the arcade version again. Just so you can see it in motion while I'm playing this. It'd be hard to pick... You know, if these are on identical screens and we're picking up identical on camera you'd be hard-pressed to actually tell these games apart. You know, you, you wouldn't know which one was running on which. If I had this running 60 hertz on an identical screen to this main emulator here on my PC, you'd be hard-pressed to pick these games apart and know which one has come from which system. You know, the sound effects might give it away, but not much else. You know, and similarly, you know, I mean, obviously I showed you the Spectron demo. It's the same story for that. It looks just superb. You know, it's cool that you've got those really trippy, you know, Caesar-inducing flashing effects. And it's just cool, so cool to see, you know. So I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with it, guys. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's uh, impressive stuff to see. So just having a quick look here. Uh, Android 1 remake. Um, not familiar with that one, I'm done. Um, turn the auto fire off. Piss off, Mike. <laughs> when you try and... I mean, look, my left hand doesn't work already as it is, right? I'm trying to film two screens, talk about both, focus on the camera, read what you lot are yapping about, and play the game at once that I'm not very good at. I'll use auto fire if I have to. <laughs> yes, Mark, nice to see you join this, this, uh, this stream. Hopefully it's not your first, won't be your last. Uh, yeah, I'll show a lot of stuff here off on the next, and uh, you're going to get to see some some firsts from quite a few developers on here. And uh, I've already showcased a lot of games that are in development, uh, but pretty soon I've got some other things in the works which I'm going to show off. Um, I'll talk about those shortly. I'm just reading back through a few more of your comments. Yeah, I do only have one thumb, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, TV from a distance, laptop up close. Yeah, it does. It does, Dave. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a, I think this is a 17-inch laptop screen. This is a 20... I think it's a, it's a 22 or 24-inch um, TV. So, you know, obviously they're going to look different whichever way you do it. And like I say, main, I think by default, it's, it's applying uh, an interlace filter... And it's also displaying it in the correct aspect ratio, for, even on this screen. Whereas obviously this is doing its best to display it in the proper aspect ratio, but it, it's, it's not perfect. I did want to prep a lot more for this video. I, I've been trying to prep a lot more, but I've done streams two nights running. I've been pretty busy. Uh, and also I've had the, the problem, like I say, I've had a few problems uh, with the firmware and the hardware of the Next itself. I'm trying to get all that 
sorted out but it, it is difficult to keep up the guys who are doing the full development try to keep me abreast but they know best and they're aware of all the changes i'm doing my best but obviously it's not i've got a million other things to do as well and as far as my development goes on my game um i'm only doing like the design and the graphics um so obviously i don't need to the only real things i need to do with it on the next is just throw throw the actual uh, test build on there and give it a test run and see exactly how it's running so that's the reason i don't I haven't done that much updating on there because it's not fully necessary for me to do so until now and like i say i haven't had a lot of time to do it because of responsibilities so you know what life's like yeah the colors are bleached out only with the streaming it is pretty much bang on rob um you can't really do a lot to it, you know any camera i use it would look different you know if i had it set up with the vj monitor if i had it set up with the crt you know it, it's going to look different whatever happens i mean even the screen texture of these two screens is completely different obviously you can see i've got quite a, a washed out backlight on my laptop it's not the greatest of screens it's a pretty powerful laptop but it's a pretty lame screen i'll be honest and but even this kind of older tv is doing a better job of displaying low resolution graphics than that is so yeah, so I, I do apologise if it's broken up again, guys. My Wi-Fi does occasionally bottom out. It, it's something that's going on with Virgin. I'll try and sort that out in the future. Uh, just reading a few of the comments here, guys. Salamander. Yeah, the, Salamander, brilliant, brilliant game, Jeremy. I actually did a poll uh, not so long ago talking about um, what kind of games people wanted to see. And obviously everyone says... They want to see a direct port of their of their favorite arcade games. It's a lot of effort to put in for hobbyists, you know, and I think it'll only be hobbyists who continue to do them regularly, uh, because obviously the real devs have got to, you know, they're not in it for the money, but it'd be nice to do something that's worth the while. They still pay their bills with coding, um, but yeah, it's impressive to see these tech demos. Sure, sure, and uh, a lot of people said they even though they're they're ten a penny, they want to see a few more, you know horizontal vertical shooters because obviously the next now can do them really well and it is kind of it's a genre that's very much you know born of this era of gaming so yeah i'd love to see that um let's have a look down how's it going alan you're right mate yeah an arcade stick for the full experience yeah tim um obviously everyone knows what i do i build arcades or up until recently i did uh, I have plans to build uh, more than a few custom controllers for the next. It's just that I've been so busy with the events. I've been so busy with, you know, working on my own game. I've had a few personal projects I'm seeing to as well. Uh, and there's also a few little secret things going on behind the scenes. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to get in and build them as of yet. You know, I can only put myself in certain place at once. And I've been trying to stay away from the workshop because... I've not been in the greatest of health recently, but pretty soon I'm going to be building some proper arcade panels. I may even, I mean, I've been talking about selling this next, uh, and it is a beautiful next, guys. I'm going to say it again. It looks absolutely awesome now with this frosted shell, uh, this cool silver face plate and the new keyboard and membrane. Uh, again, check out ZX Renew. Check out ZX Renew. Um, but yeah, I am strongly thinking about purchasing another board uh, and actually making a next arcade, uh, whether it be a full size arcade machine or whether it be a you know like a, a bar top or some kind of compact next, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about doing a next arcade with um, maybe interchangeable control panels and some of the key games, setting those up there with their own specialist control panel and being able to play it in an arcade cabinet and that way you'd be able to truly see exactly how the games stack up. So, uh, Dave, yeah, I'd love to see a Street to Rage style game. Yeah, Dave, you know what? I um, A few people have mentioned this. There's, there's certain genres that were definitely born of the silver era of gaming uh, and should have found their way onto home platforms, but the home platforms just couldn't keep up. Now, side-scrolling fighters or brawlers, whatever you want to call them, those are the games I most fondly remember from my, you know, just pre-teen years, I suppose. And um, I loved things like, you know, I loved Double Dragon was probably the first one to catch my eye. 
but I used to enjoy Bad Dudes, I used to like Vigilante, um, and I, I always tried to find a side-scrolling brawler on the next, and it, also on the Spectrum, and it just wasn't possible to find them done properly, you know, and now it's definitely possible. Now, I know there's one in production. I've had a couple of ideas about doing them, but I think it'd be a serious undertaking graphically, and that's about all I can do. Um, and But, you know, I'd love to see it, definitely. And we've definitely got that possibility. Again, this is when things like Mega Drive pads as a standard will kind of come into their own. Um, and, yeah, I would love to see that. I'd love to see a Final Fight port or a Streets of Rage port, something like that. But, yeah, an original fight would be really cool. And the next definitely capable of it, especially with multiplayer available. Outrun or Space Harrier. Yeah, def definitely from a tech perspective, Jeremy, the Outrun for the Spectrum was a terrible port back in the day. If Outrun could be done for the next, I think a lot of people would have their hands up saying, you know, we want this, you know what I mean? Let, let's see this. Um, to get a fast-paced racer with a nice AY rendition of Magical Sound Shower. Um, and then, of course, yeah, Space Harrier. Again, another super fast-paced game. Uh, the Spectrum actually did a decent port of Space Harrier, to my recollection. But yeah, the next could certainly do a lot more with the right people behind it. There we go. Mike said, yeah, didn't do Parallax Stars because the original didn't have them. Yeah, the tune's a little bit, only a little bit slower, Alan, because this is running on 50 hertz. It's not running at uh, the 60 hertz. So apologies for that. I, I've already explained why. Yeah, it is tempting, Robin. I mean, I mean, it would be cool in a way. I mean, in, in a way, that's what people do when they create, you know, arcade-inspired games. What I might as well talk about it now because I was going to talk about it anyway. I've, I've been speaking um, to the author of QB, uh, which obviously, um, Cy Butler, I think, is still watching somewhere. Um, he did the graphics for, and uh, I've been speaking to the guy who authored that, and uh, I've asked him for a preview version of that very soon. And as soon as it's passed hardware testing, He's going to be sending me a version of that, and I'm going to be covering that. And um, I'm, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to compare it directly with Cubit because it's not fair. But everybody knows what it's inspired by. Now, I think it's cool to do an arcade port and just give it its own character and add a little bit to that mix. Um, you know, rather than modify the original game, if you take it and completely change the theming and everything, I think that then gives you opportunity to do those extra bits without feeling like you're bastardising the original. So, yeah. So, yeah, pretty soon, guys, I'll be covering QB on the next. That's one I'll be covering. I will also be covering D-Next by David Safia. Now, that's kind of going a little bit out of my comfort zone, guys, but I'm going to be covering uh, the, 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 the Spectrum's first kind of uh, basic art package uh, where you'll be able to create your own live kind of uh, spectrum loading screens or static images directly on the next uh, using a mouse. Um, I need to get to grips with that one before I cover it in a video because I'm creative, but it's, it's not wise to show off a creative tool without being able to show all the features. But I think that's something that's going to be available to a lot of people. And I think it's going to come in handy for kind of editing on the fly. So hopefully soon I'll be able to cover D-Next and QB at the same time. Uh, I, I also wanted to cover next door the uh, the sound creation studio but unfortunately I know absolutely nothing about that and I said I wouldn't be able to do it any kind of justice else I would have covered next door by now uh, at this point I think I've covered most of the games that you've seen video footage for I have covered up to this point you know I've covered um, you know I've covered the hollow earth hollow earth hypothesis uh, Angry Bloaters, um, I've, the ones I haven't covered yet are the ones by, um, oh yeah, his name's just suddenly escaped me because I mentioned that many names, uh, Mike Daly, I haven't looked at his Lemmings and I haven't looked at Crate Box yet because he's still working on those and he's still deep in them, he might want to show them himself, um, but you know, most of the other guys, I've tried to cover theirs and do them justice and show where they're up to, Warhawk and Baggers in Space, obviously I have, and, um, you know, my own game, Revival Survival, might not be everyone's cup of tea. It might seem primitive compared to other people's, but it's a perfect port to the arcade as far as I'm concerned. 
and I'm really proud to be working on something for the next and I hope people will want to play it when it's it's finally finished so yeah um, not a kosher demo unless you play both at once have you seen my hand Robbie <laughs> you don't know me well enough but basically this hand uh, doesn't work it hasn't worked now for 11 years and it will never work properly again so unfortunately uh, playing uh, two games at once is just an impossibility uh, colours at the top I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that Jeremy um, is it some kind of artefacting maybe I'm not entirely sure uh, there's a slight difference between the two in that you've got credit written in blue on the original scramble and obviously white here on uh, Mike's port of it uh, and you haven't got high score and one up written on the top of the screen where the scores are. But you've got to remember, guys, this is a kind of pet project. It's, 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 as, it's as perfect as it can be gameplay-wise. So I guess it's just taking a couple of liberties with regards to the layout and things like that. Yeah, different opinions on arcade perfect games. Atari had space instigators. Pac-Man 4K, 8K. They reckon that these games are arcade perfect, really. Also, Ladybug on 2600, the Coleco version is Arcade Perfect. When I talk about Arcade Perfect, Simon, um, I'm talking in the minds of the people who have been observing the next as a project. Now, you, you had games that played as good and were as good as the arcade versions ported to systems back in the day or have been done recently in homebrew. Um, However, I don't believe that they're the kind of games you could call arcade perfect because no matter how hard you try, they will never be able to replicate pixel for pixel as you see it and as you play it, what the arcade really was. And if you were to put them side by side like this, you would it's clear which one's which, right? What I'm talking about when it comes to arcade perfection is if you're able to replicate it visually you're immediately putting people in the right frame of mind, in the right, in the right zone to play the game as they remember it. Um, and then it's just a matter of being a good coder and being able to get the movement, the enemy AI, and all the little effects and stuff which kind of add to that atmosphere to make it arcade perfect. I'm talking about arcade perfection with the next because if it weren't for the fact I've got them side by side here, I wouldn't even know that there's an odd colour off that slightly different. I wouldn't notice that some of the text spacing is slightly different. Even the high score thing at the top needed pointing out to me because it's, it's kind of irrelevant. In terms of arcade perfection, I'm just going to quickly run this again just to show you. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to start both games at the same time. And the, like pixel for pixel, this is running 50 hertz admittedly. If this is in 60 hertz, you would see exactly how identical it was. I wish I could hook up the controls to both systems at the same time and play them both, but let's just show you again. So, same time. I mean, they are rolling at exactly the same pace, allowing for obviously 50 hertz, a little bit of 50 hertz lag. You know, the effects are the same, the graphics are the same, the sound effects are the same. The shooting's the same, the missiles are the same, the enemies are the same. Um, you know, the same pace of firing on your bullets. You know, the same screen transitions as the colours cycle through. It's, it's identical, you know, and it is arcade perfect. It's not just the way it looks. The way it's playing is identical. That's what I mean by arcade perfect. You know, it's got to tick all the boxes. And I think that this genuinely does. And I think Spectron will as well. Spectron probably even more so. Um, let's have a drink there, guys. Sorry. A little bit of dry mouth with all the talking I'm doing. But yeah, Arcade Perfect Simon. I genuinely think so, yes. Uh, first, second, cup in my eyes. Ignore my... <laughs> yeah, I know, Kev. He's always busting my balls, Kev. <laughs> you should have seen him before this. He was saying, oh, I've got another version for you. I've got another version for you. Wait wait till these streams. I've got this other version over to you. Um, 
Who's doing a boss job, Tony? Not me. You never compliment me, mate. <laughs> uh, the red and purple and the sign on the next. Yeah, Jeremy, like I say, that's, that's camera. That's a camera artifact. That's not actually how it appears in reality. In reality, the colours I'm seeing here uh, are identical. The screen is actually a lot more washed out on my laptop in person than it is on here. Um, and yet, I can still compare the colours directly. And the colours are so rich on this. I think it's because the colour temperature is actually up on this TV compared to my laptop, which I always run in like a, an eye care mode, if you know what I mean. I think that's where the difference is coming. But the, the pink of the scenery there, I mean, that looks like it's bright white. That is actually, if I try and get close up, you might get a better. There we go. I've just moved in closer. And if you look at the blues and the pinks, actually, this should help. So I'm going to pan over to the computer, the PC in a minute. So you can compare. What's happening is my camera, it keeps adjusting as the colours change. If you look at the bold primary colours you see in there, but again, that red looks orange on screen now, but in reality, it's really like red. If I pan backwards, the red's a lot more accurate. Um, again, I'll, I'll just quickly show you this again, and then I'll move over to the arcade version so you can compare the colours directly. So up close, these colours look super strong. They're actually really clean in reality. Um, I'll say get back into the game. There we go. And you can see the richness of the pink and the blue, the colour of the ship, the colour of the rockets, the colour of the hood. If I now pan over to the PC and look at this up close, they are identical. The palette is bang on. There are no problems there with the ship, with the hood, everything. It's all pretty much identical. It's only the, the backlights of the screens and the uh, the reaction of my camera on my phone that's actually showing any kind of disparity between them. It really is perfect. Yeah, there's, look, there's no way of getting around that, guys. I think it looks awesome. I really do. Um, Pete, yeah. Um, I mean, when I told you I was going to be doing a video on the next, and I said I'd be showing off, obviously, what I've I've done with my next, with your casing and stuff, I told you it'd be a special one, because you're getting to see uh, a pretty capable little machine looking flash, looking as flash as the games that are being played on it. So, uh, there's lots of comments, guys. Sorry, I'm just going through them before I move on. Uh, there are also options to help with display for fitting at 60 hertz. There we go. You got it straight from Mike there, guys. You will all have the source code eventually, so people can play and create new levels. That would be superb, Mike. For people like me who've never got a dream of, of kind of learning to code, to be able to create games yourself is awesome. And as, as it happens, guys, there's, there's something by Mike I'm going to be covering soon, which he's already kind of have told a few of you about. Uh, he's actually done a Manic Maker, which is a Manic, a manic Miner create-your-own game kind of tool. Uh, and I'll be covering that in a video pretty soon, so uh, you're all going to get to see exactly um, what Mike's done with that on PC. So we're going to cover that in a video. I'll probably be doing that with a friend though, so I can kind of talk them through some level creation while I talk about the game. So there we go. There's some screen caps by David to show you a direct comparison. What I might do after this is actually take some photographs or some screen caps. Uh, and can show you the, the two games side by side after you've seen the video so you can see just how close they are. Yeah, we've talked about that, Jeremy. The, yeah, yeah, there's de definitely room to elaborate. Yes, Alan, the, the credits one is in white on the next, not in blue. But like I say, that, that's, I think that's where those are the things that Mike's been less, you know, less bothered about. Um, <laughs> uh, next arcade how much <laughs> I'll tell you what guys wait till I do one and then we'll see <laughs> how's it going Gareth hi Charlotte how you doing there you go Jim's piped in now guys the scramble was a test to see how close the next could get the source will be released for people to look at and play with you might even be able to tweak it and get it even closer next pad yeah like i say jeremy i've tried to talk to the guy who was making some next pads and i was i was trying to get something sorted out with him 
but unfortunately, he'd either slipped his mind or he just changed his mind. But I really wanted to get some of those in to experiment with and be able to show people the kind of peripherals that are going to be available for the next when it comes out. But he hasn't got back to me, so maybe I'm just going to go straight ahead now. Uh, start start dissecting some pads and just making custom controllers, custom arcade sticks for it. Super Baggers Fighter 7 Turbo EX Alpha Bastard. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, actually, as. <laughs> Kevin's fifth in the high school, yeah. Got to put each other's names in. Uh, yes, you can, Jeremy. The um, the next has uh, a PS2 port on the back, a legacy PS2 port. You can, using a splitter, connect a PS2 keyboard and a mouse to it, which for a lot of people who don't case their nexts, that's how they're doing it. But because obviously I've got the full uh, membrane keyboard, that PS2 port on the back can you be used exclusively for use with a mouse? Now I have got plenty of PS2 mice laying about, so uh, I'm gonna pick a good one, and when I actually do showcase Dave Safia's D next, uh, I'll be using that, and I'll be talking a bit more about that. Yeah, it has PS2 to him, yeah. All the old Kempston mouse software titles are supported, but you can use a modernish, yes. Um, okay. Scroll wheel and the three buttons are also supported. That's good to know, Robin, because I suppose if somebody wanted to create a game um, that primarily used the mouse, obviously uh, Mike, Mike Daly's been working on uh, Lemmings, uh, or if you wanted to do like a real-time strategy, you know, it's, it's a lot bit more of an involved game. But if you've got a real-time strategy, left, right, and centre clicks on the scroll wheel would, would be super handy for doing a game like that. Or if someone wants to have the balls to try and do a first person shooter. Sneaking some colour clash in the collision. <laughs> As it happens, uh Pete, when it comes to um when it comes to that, um when I actually made my game, Revival Survival, I actually put in a bonus level in the middle in which you enter a spectrum, you get sucked inside a spectrum, you have to escape. And what I did is I created a level that was inspired by Attic Attack. And the backgrounds and the enemies on that actually do suffer from colour clash. And it's intentional because it's, it's a weird stark contrast from the proper hardware sprites that are moving in front of it. That are displayed in full colour. So it looks pretty cool. I suppose someone could base a game entirely around that mechanic. You know, a kind of old meets new kind of thing. Uh, is, sorry, there's a lot of a lot of comments, guys. I'm trying to go down, and do forgive me if I've, I'm boring any of you, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to keep up. God, there's been a lot of comments. I'm going to have to go back and read all these in detail. Um, oh, it's pronounced Sapphire. Sorry, Dave. I thought it was safe. You're sorry. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, Mike's just said there, Rusty Pixels will help others develop games if they want to. And uh, I, I hope people do go and approach them. At the end of the day, um, I've known Jim many years. Mike, I only, I've only known since last year. And he's been a top bloke. I've spoke to him a lot in the last 12 months. And he's done some stellar work on my own game. And uh, since uh, we, we've got it on, I might as well kind of uh, cover that one as well. I know it's not some of the title people are as excited to hear about as, you know, Messrs Bagley and Ware have been doing on other things. But... I'm quite proud of my little game, and uh, Revival Survival's had some progress in uh, the, the recent months. The guys have been working on their main release games, but uh, behind the scenes, I've also been doing a little bit of work on um, Revival Survival, and they've been doing, you know, they've been trying to move it on and, and, and try, try and get a few more levels and stuff put in and refine the AI and the, the um, all the other things on there, so... I'm just going to quickly show you how that's getting on. Uh, there's not too much to show at the moment, but there's a little bit of a clue there as to what's coming up, and I just want to talk about it because we're trying to introduce a few firsts on here, and it's a good test bed for the guys at Rusty Pixels to show you exactly what's going on. So let's jump down, and it is that one there, and that one there. So again, we've got a side-by-side -side comparison here. I've done this before, um, and this is an older version of the PC version, which is the last complete build. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna show you this as a demo. 
and then we'll call up the Spectrum Next version. There we go. So Revival Survival, it's moved on quite a bit. But again, when it comes to comparing, you know, the PC, PC slash arcade version was made as a dedicated arcade game. It was made to look like a retro game, but it's obviously got some effects that are a lot more um, demanding, a lot more advanced than what, um, you know, an old 8-bit arcade game would have been capable of. That was why it was ripe and it was the perfect kind of game to port to the next and show just how well a next can handle not only classic gaming and classic styles, but actually more demanding tax like, you know, loads of on screen, full colour sprites, um, you know, um multi you know, multi layer graphics, you know, scrolling backgrounds, um, you know, multi layer AY sound and things like that. And I'm really impressed with how it's coming out. So um, we've got, obviously, this is the PC version on the left. This is the latest build. Now, this is um, a quickly bug decoded version. But it's got a couple of little things which have changed since the last version that I showed. Um, obviously, you can see as far as the attract sequences go, they're pretty much identical, uh, except for the fact that, obviously, the this one's got music. This one hasn't at the moment. Uh, and also there's an added credit screen for the guys from Rusty Pixels. Um, so we'll just um, we'll press start. Now pressing start on the PC version. Puts you into that straight away. On this, we've actually now got a new option. We've got arcade mode, we've got deathmatch mode, and we've got redefine keys. Now these have been added very recently if you press three to redefine keys you get this nice little backdrop here of the eventual next keyboard you'll see and you can recode the keys on the fly um, it will be two player as you can see let's quickly map some keys um, but yes and you'll also see there the deathmatch option and obviously the deathmatch option is the uh, we're going to be having a proper full two player head to head mode which the arcade version never got but it's not in there yet but you can see now we've added added an intro sequence to this there's still some animations and character placements to sort out but it's now been added in um, it moves along a bit faster than the one on the PC but it is, it is fully all there, all the text is there, and when it gets to this screen, it looks pretty much identical. We've dropped the scrolling background because we felt it didn't quite fit, but we've got the same. Same admission screen, and into the game. I'm going to attempt to play it now. Now this version differs slightly from the last version that I showed you. The last version I showed you, we just implemented uh, character movement, enemy movement, uh, and enemy kind of physics. Uh, it was also playing at a ridiculously fast rate. The respawn rate of the characters was fast, and it was very, very difficult to actually complete a stage because of that. Um, what uh, Mike's actually done in recent weeks is kind of dialed all that back to make it a little bit more playable right now. Make it a little bit easier for the first stages to actually complete a level. There's still things to fix, such as the hit points of each each enemy. But now, like the, the different enemies have got different behaviours. The um, the barrels move at a different pace. They've all got different hit points. Certain enemies can go off the screen, like the invaders and the ghosts. But the special enemies, like the barrels and the the uh, the real trick enemies you get later on they can't actually go off the sides of the screen and chase you, which is which is something that they they uh, did on the arcade. So we've made it very close now. You'll also see that from the last version, if you go back to one of my old videos, uh, the background characters such as the people on reception at the bottom, uh, the uh, my wife there handing out the leaflets, uh, and uh, some of the people just playing the games in the background. They were all moving at exactly the same two-frame animation, which made them a little bit one-dimensional, I suppose. Uh, on the original game, they've all got their own independent movement, 
they're independent paced and they all kind of shuffle around and do little things. If I linger by this guy here, you'll see that he turns to play the game and then he shuffles his position every so often. There's a guy just below me gesturing. My Scottish friend Mike there enjoying a point. He, he moves at a slightly irregular rate there. And you can see that the waving of the flyers there is, is very irregular. So each of the characters now, even though they all only have two stage animations, um, they've all got their own personality now because they move at their own individual paces. And I think it looks really cool. Uh, we've got all the collectible items implemented, which are all console games for these stages. And I'm going to try and complete a stage now. <laughs> Just so I can show you stage two. But yeah, the enemies are moving at a more realistic rate. We've had to adjust a lot when it comes to the AI on this game because you're working with a smaller play field and we've had to redraw the graphics for the smaller screen. We couldn't have quite as many sprites and enemies on screen because it would make the game unfair. The last build that I showed you, the enemies and the characters were at the same number and pace as found on the arcade game. But on the arcade game, you've got one third more screen space to play with. You haven't got that on this, and it made it too difficult. Now, the difficulty ramps up uh, on the arcade over a total of 10 levels. We're hoping this version will actually have 16 to 20 levels because we're going to break some stages up. So it will actually have more than the arcade game ever had. It's also going to have the two-player death match, so we'll be designing arenas for that. Uh, it's going to be a, a really inclusive game. Um, so yeah, we've added a few new characters on stage two. We've got different music for stage two now as well. Got Big Vinny there with his bottle of Lucas Aid, as he always has at the events. There's one of our special enemies there, Spencer, known as the Plum Warrior on this. Anybody who knows Spencer will get the reference, but even if you don't, it's quite a quirky character. Um, I'm quite proud of my pixel art on this game. I mean, I'd never done anything too arty. And the pixel art I've done has all been done by hand. Some things look quite simplistic because they were intended to look simplistic. Because I wanted the detail of the other things that I did to stand out. So, like, the games that are on the cartridges are very readily identifiable. That's clearly a Game Boy game running Mario Land. That's clearly Super Mario World on the SNES. And over there we've clearly got Sonic for the Mega Drive. Not only that, but some of the people who paid to be in the game, you know, their facial features, I've created a kind of artwork style where you can readily identify the people who they are. And if you know any of the people on the scene, you'll recognise some. We've got Andy Spencer here, the curator of the Retro Computer Museum in Leicester. Anybody who knows him will recognise him. We've got Jason McKenzie there from the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Um, he's just there behind the counter. We've got uh, some of the real old systems there. We've got a Magnavox Odyssey. We've got uh, Super Graphics. We've got, I think that's one of the Atari systems there. We've got an Atari 2600. We've got Max and Jackie, two scene favourites there, who've had their graphics updated for this version. Oh, I'm going to take a hit here and die. Uh, but everything else from the, from the arcade game has been replicated here. Each stage got its own cool pace music now. And each stage will have, it, have its own challenge as well. So um, I haven't got a level skip implemented in this, so I can't show you past there. But we've got high score entry at least. Like I say, the, the, the startings of two-player mode are actually partially implemented. We've got the correct copyright on there now. Obviously, it's been amended for... Uh, in the inclusion of Rusty Pixels. Six years apart, these games, it's uh, been a long time in coming. There's been a long story behind this game. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite proud of how it's coming on anyway, guys. And um, I hope you guys, anyway, like what you see when it comes to this game. I'm going to be pushing this out. It will be released in some form. Uh, I definitely want people to be able to play it. Uh, the original backers of the Kickstarter for the original game will be able to get hold of a copy of this. And uh, the next version is going to pay homage to the original and to things that have developed in the last six years of doing Revival. Um, you're going to be able to see this game at the upcoming Revival events. The next big event we've got, obviously, is Revival uh, Gaming Legends 2019 on the 15th and 16th of June this year at Warsaw Stadium. 
and uh, you'll be able to hopefully be able to see maybe a finished version of this game or close to finished version of this game running side by side with its arcade counterpart. You're also going to see quite a few of the next developers there. Um, they'll be showing off how far their games have got so far and hopefully, fingers crossed, by June, everybody will have had their neck, well, a large portion of people may actually have their proper full case necks arrived and in use and we're going to have if they if they have we're going to have a load out at the event we're going to have you know this one my own custom laver engraved one and they're going to be playing all the best next games out there we're going to have some challenges on there it's going to be really cool i'm fully back in the next i'm fully back in all the developers who are working on it and like i say uh stay tuned to this channel because pretty soon i'm going to be covering several more games i've got a few more on the way I'll be covering other software uh, and I'll also be doing some other hardware reviews and things like that. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully next week, the week after, we'll have a little bit more next for you. Uh, take it easy, leave any comments and suggestions and uh, I'll see you all soon.